Right, in this video then we're talking about solving quadratics through factorising and just like in the discriminant video, I just want to make it ultra clear what we mean by solving. Solving means when does this graph cross the x-axis? Um, <clears throat> so this is, in a sense, you are doing a simultaneous equation which you may not have thought about in these terms before, so very quickly y equals x squared plus 5x plus 4. When does that graph equal the graph of y equals 0? So y equals 0, that's when y equals 0. And then you've got your um, x squared plus 5x plus 4. I don't know what it looks like in the moment, but let's assume it looks like this. You're saying then, what is the solution of the simultaneous equation when y equals 0 and y equals x squared plus 5x plus 4. And y equals 0 means when does this thing cross the x-axis, okay? So that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to find the values of x that uh, meet this criteria. And there's a number of methods to do it. So factorizing, quadratic formula, complete the square. And that's what's going to be in this booklet. So we're going to factorize first. So you've done <coughs> what you first need to do is make your quadratic in the form x squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Just like we talked about in the previous video on discriminants. It has to equal zero first in order for you to solve it. And you want to write it in that form ax squared plus bx plus c. So x squared, x, and a number before you start dealing with quadratics. Okay. So here we have x squared plus 5x plus 4 equals zero. Okay. The reason we're going to make it equal zero is because we're going to factorize it into two sets of brackets, and that means that this bracket must equal zero, or this bracket must equal zero. Because the only way to make zero through timesing is to have zero times something, or zero times something. Okay? So let's go for it. <coughs> So we know from before that we need to generate x squared, so that's got to be x and x. And we know we've got to generate 4, so that could either be 4 and 1, or it could be 2 and 2. So I'm going to guess 4 and 1, because I'm, you know, like in the uh, factorizing video, I'm going to kind of take an educated guess. And I reckon it's going to be pluses in there, because it couldn't really be minus. And then I'm always, though, going to check. Okay, so check by multiplying out. So there was x squared plus 4x, plus x, plus 4, and yes, we do get what we started with, so I'm happy. So the solutions then, as I said, means one thing could be 0, or the other thing could be 0. So first we'll try, what happens if x plus 1 equals 0? That tells us that x equals minus 1. There's one solution. And what happens when x plus 4 equals 0? Well, x then must equal minus 4. There's solution 2. And going back to the discriminant uh, problem that we talked about last time, what is the discriminant of this thing? So b squared minus 4ac equals, well, <coughs> remember here a is 1, b is 5, c is 4. So we have 5 squared minus 4 lots of 1 times 4. So I know you can't see that very well. So 4. So 25 minus 16 is 9. So therefore, we definitely know we should have two distinct real solutions uh, because this is bigger than 0. So two real roots, OK? And we do. So we know that actually my graph was wrong. It should cross at minus 4 and minus 1. So it's going to look something like that, OK? Next. So let's try that again. Is it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0? Yes, it is. So we can begin to factorize because that means one of these things equals 0 or the other thing equals 0. So how do we make 6x squared? So I don't know. We'll try it. It could be 6x and x or it could be 3x and 2x. We don't know. Um, I'm going to try 3x and 2x. Remember, it doesn't matter if I get it wrong. I just need to make sure I check it. Uh, to make sure that I'm correct. And then we've got minus 3. Well, how do you make minus 3? So that's either minus 3 and 1 or uh, minus 1 and 3. So let's try that out. So let's try 3 and 1. And I'm going to put a minus there and a plus there. Because, again, I'm just taking an educated guess. But I don't know if I'm correct because I need to check. So if I multiply that out, that's 6x squared 
minus 9x plus 2x minus 3. Yeah, we're happy with that. That's fantastic. And therefore, we can go on to say that, right, that means 3x plus 1 equals 0, or 2x minus 3 equals 0. And therefore, x must be minus a third, and x must be 3 over 2. So we are happy with that. That's, so that's what it means by solve. Solve means find the values of x that make that work. Now, just like in the discriminant video, here we have one curve equals another curve. So when we say solve, we mean when does that curve cross that curve? For what values of x, if at all? And that's where the discriminant may help us as well. We can move it all over, so it all equals zero. And let's say our b squared minus 4ac told us that that was going to be bigger than zero. That means that the two graphs would cross each other twice. Okay, so if it, or if it equals zero, it means they'd cross each other just once. Okay, so that's the link between the discriminant and solving. So first we need to get this in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. We can't do anything until we've done that. So 5x squared take 10x squared, we know is minus 5x squared. And we've also got this x squared over here. So I don't really like minuses in front of x's x squared, so I'm going to... So at the moment we're here, I won't go too fast. I'm going to plus 5x squared onto that side. So we get 6x squared plus x minus 7 is 0. Okay? And then we can factorize then. So how do we make 6x squared? We talked about it in the other video. It could be 6x and x, or it could be 3x and 2x. So I'm going to guess 6x and x. And here we've got a minus 7, so how do we make that? Well, that's minus 7, 1, or vice versa. So I don't know, I'm going to put the 7 there and the 1 there. Right, and let's see what happens. So um, uh, actually, so again, this is what I'm saying about an educated guess. I don't think that this is going to... Hmm, yeah, okay, let's try. <coughs> so we're going to check. So 6x times x, 6x squared, minus 6x plus 7x. Aha, yes, it will work. Have faith in yourself, Scott, at this time in the morning. Okay, so we are actually happy. And that means then that this thing must equal 0, or this thing must equal 0. So x must be 1, or x must be minus 7 by 6. Okay. And we're happy with that. Excellent. Done.